food focused nonprofit, and we are right outside the Tully Gates. Um, Woodlawn, Pope Leahy, that historic mansion at the top of the hill. You see the barn buildings to your left when you go north on Route 1, and there's a farm to the right. This is our farm. That's our production firm. We actually have two farms on the property. So I am, as I said, the executive director. Um, this is a relatively new role for me. Uh, my entire life was spent as a national security journalist. Um, I was in the Pentagon Press Corps, and um, I spent a fair amount of time in Iraq and Afghanistan. So, um, I came away from that experience with a profound respect for um, your capabilities. Uh, wholly separate from your ability to fight, it was really your ability to think and to work out problems and to um, overcome pretty insurmountable odds to achieve uh, impressive stuff. And um, the nation needs 700,000 farmers over the next 20 years. Wow. The average age of the American farmer is about 58 now, and so over the next 20 years, 700,000 of them will age out of the profession, either by retiring or dying. Um, if we want to keep eating, we really need about 30,000 new farmers every year. So we do our small part uh, just up the road from you guys a piece. The Arcadia Veteran Farmer Program is a program that is funded by the USDA. Um, we have a beginning farmer rancher development grant for the next three years, so you can be sure that we will be there for at least the next three years. And we have two <coughs> training tracks. Um, before I get into those details, <coughs> let me say that if you're thinking, I don't have any farming background, I don't have any land, this is not for me, shelve that for just a second. Um, one, uh, one thing that happened recently was um, Soldier for Life came out to look at our program because they're going to be talking with folks about you know, this as, as a possibility for them after they leave. And one of the guys from Soldier for Life signed up. <laughs> so we're training him. Uh, we get a lot of kids that come to the farm like command buildings. And um, around about July, they've given up their idea of farming because it's hot and it's hard. Um, you guys know from hot and hard. Here's a, the hardest day farming is not as hard as the hardest day at food camp. So this is something that you all are very, very capable of doing. Um, so let me tell you about our two, our two programs. The first uh, track of our program is the Veteran Farm Fellowship. This is a full-time job for a year, 40 hours a week. It's paid pretty poorly. But it, is also, it also qualifies you uh, to draw down your GI Bill benefits. It's an on-the-job training program, and you actually farm at our farm. We're taking two fellows this year. They start in January with um, office work, crop planning, uh, mostly, and sort of planning for the year, doing lots of reading. In February, they're going to move into our greenhouses and start learning about starting seedlings. By March, we're out in the field, we're running tractors, we're building beds, and then it is off to the races. Uh, this year, I think we grew just outside your gates on a little less than three acres, about 90,000 servings of fresh, healthy food, and all of the food that we grow goes into um, our, our food access program. We have mobile markets that go into low food access neighborhoods where people who don't have a lot of money and certainly don't have access to really good quality food can get food from us. They pay for it, and um, uh, but they pay less than they would pay if they went to another farmer's market, but it's still the best quality food. So that's what we grow the food for, and while we're growing that, we're training military veterans. So our fellowship is on farm, 40 hours a week, uh, not that great pay, better than, better than minimum wage, uh, but you can pull down your, um, your GI Bill benefits from it, and what it gets you is your base housing allowance if you have those benefits left for a, a year, which then pushes this into a pretty reasonable lifestyle. And it gives you a chance to really learn how a farm works. And this is a vegetable farm. We have a couple of chickens, but nothing big. Now the other um, piece of our training program is weekends only. It is one weekend a month and two weeks a year, like the, uh, like guard. the guard. And um, that's, I was being clever when I did that. And um, it's typically the last weekend of the month, and it is a full weekend of it's a full weekend of training, and the training components uh, are, there's three or four things that we, we do. We, we visit other farms that are successful of like, really different stuff. So on one day, we'll go to um, a, a giant, it, it's, it's called Bright, uh, Bright Farm, it's down in Culpeper. It's this giant um, hydroponics growing thing, and you wear a lab coat and the, and the and 
Pat, and then out to a bison farm um, not very far away. Uh, organic vegetables, commercial uh, corn, which is you know GMO raised corn. Um, we visit uh, organic flower production facilities, small urban farms, trying to get you the complete sense of what's possible for you. And, um, and so we have our field trip program and we only visit farms that are actually successful so that you can talk to the farmers about what their model is and how they're actually making money, what they invested, how long it took before they started turning a profit. Farming, I should say, is a lifestyle as much as it is a job. Um, you need to get into it because it's what you want to do and it's what you feel passionate about. The nice part, I think, for veterans particularly is that farming is a job that has meaning built right into it. You are serving the public, you are serving your family, and it is this complete lifestyle that I think you are accustomed to associating and with your And you're your own boss. And you're your own boss, um, <coughs> which is nice. Or you can just Good go and work on somebody else's <laughs> farm, yeah. So, uh, but veterans are also, as you guys know, the most entrepreneurial class of Americans, and a farm is nothing if not a small business. So that gets us to the second part of our curriculum. We have a really talented business trainer who is both a professional CPA and a tax attorney who is associated with, uh, who only works with sustainable farmers. So she really knows what she's talking about. And she comes in four weekends a year and does <clears throat> about 10 hours of training each weekend, helping people understand everything from what kind of insurance they're gonna need and what kind of corporation they're going to set up when they start to creating a business plan to setting up their QuickBooks so that they are good to go as soon as they, as, as soon as they roll out of there. We also have an um, on-farm trainer who is a farmer with 10 years of working with beginning farmers and can sort of walk you through all of the academic parts of farming because farming is as much an intellectual pursuit as it is a physical pursuit. You need to understand lots and lots about botany and science and climate and water and pests and um, amendments and, and soil chemistry. So we have classroom training, we have field trips, we have business training, and then the final piece is hands-on cultivation, where the first time that you, it's like sort of like left seat, right seat training, the first time that you experience uh, harlequin beetles will be with an experienced farmer at your side. You're not gonna have to try and figure it out for yourself what you're doing. So, um, so it's one week in a month, two weeks a year. The two weeks a year, we want people to have the opportunity to really feel what farming is, so that they, we ask them to work on either our farm or other farms that might be closer to them. I have folks who fly up uh, for this program from Florida, somebody who drives in from Delaware, uh, lots of people from the Virginia Beach area. This is a fairly unusual program. We, are, we train in roughly a platoon-sized group and you know, by about March, after three visits, it's a, it's a pretty tight unit and everybody kind of looks out for everybody else. You don't have to worry too much, um, particularly with the Veteran Reserve Program, which is the weekend program, if you have some physical limitations. Farming is one of the most dangerous professions in the nation, probably only second to being deployed, or perhaps even just training in the military. And therefore, there are organizations, one, one's called Agribility, that has, um, developed lots of technologies that help people who have physical limitations continue to be able to farm. Um, we've actually had a number of people that have gone through our program and didn't become farmers, but did something else that they discovered during the course of their work with us. Um, I've had uh, one who went off to work, for, or who got a job through us because they contacted us because they know that we have incredible people that um, are training with us. At, a, at the Green Street Nurseries, and she became sort of their expert in growing vegetable starts and got a great job with them. I had another one who started working for a local foods grocery. Um, he was, uh, he's just very interested in the environment and she needed some help with some kind of uh, uh, cost analysis and ended up hiring him to be her HR manager. He's now moved with his family up to Vermont where he is the buying director for two food hubs for in Maine and in New Hampshire. And so he continues to connect us to resources, including farmers who want to sell their farm or pass on their farm to a veteran farmer. So.